Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another mo uh, book review. Excuse me, book review. I recently uh, finished Ender Shadow, which is actually a parallax, what's called a parallax, and it speaks more of Julian Delphiki, A.K.A. Bean, and he is a very fascinating character, and it talks about his bringing on the streets and how he was a genius from the moment that he was actually found and taken in by um, somebody <clears throat> who really didn't want any children to harbor. The story goes that um, Bean, he actually hid himself somewhere in in a toilet, actually, he had his diapers on and everything, and it was one of those plastic lids so he could lift it easily. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it seemed to be quite an unusual feat of strength at that time, but when they realized that it had been easily moved, even for uh, an infant, still it was quite something of a marvel and uh, a lot of questions were circulating about uh, Bean and where he came from and it's like uh, they start wondering well he's an extraordinary child he must have extraordinary parents and nobody knows who his parents are he's a lot like Ender Wiggin and we all know about Ender Wiggin if you've read Ender's Game so it kind of ties into that and I like this story because uh, it also is very heart warming at the very end because we learn a bit about Nikolai as well and it's kind of a twist you don't see coming but you, you kind of feel it a little bit for him because you uh, are led to believe that there's more to Nikolai than meets the eye and uh, you start making conclusions and deductions based on that and of course I did because I, I kind of thought you know what um, they're a little bit more familiar than I think that they should be. Um, and uh, it kind of got me thinking. And actually, my prediction is correct. And if you read the entire book, then you'll see that my prediction was correct. Um, the whole story is about what happens when the buggers are, well, they call them the formics in this one because bugger is considered a kind of a derogatory or um, swear in, in this particular book. They, they don't call them buggers anymore. They just call them formics. Um, but of course, Bean, he is a little bit rebellious and he said they're, they're buggers. You call them what they are. They, uh, they kill. They're basically, they have a hive mind. They obey the hive mind or the queen. They're like a, a colony of ants. And he has a dream about the formics or the buggers. And he sees himself dragged in, uh, dragged with all of the launches that are in the IF or the Inter International Federation or Intergalactic Federation. And um, they're being dragged along by a bugger on one of its legs. And uh, of course, there's a shoe as well, but you know, the shoe can't stop him. But he says he could either be um, the ants or you could be the shoe and he had one solution to this be the shoe so that was um, one of the phrases in the, in the book I thought that was very telling of his character and that he wanted to put an end to the bugger war at all, at all costs if he could um, there's another character that's also very interesting in the very beginning of the book her name's Poke of course we don't know what her real name was, but she's um, kind of a conflicted character, um, and of course so is Achilles, but we learn to hate Achilles because of what he does, and he does it under the influence of anesthetic, but I'm not going to go into that. It's rather multi-layered, um, but I absolutely <laughs> despised his character. I mean, I despised his character from the get-go because he acts arrogant and conceited and like he's smarter than everybody else, but he knows better, especially when it comes to Bean, and then he doesn't consider being capable of doing all these things or uh, leading a revolution 
which he ultimately does, because at first he comes out as kind of a loner and the the tests that they were doing, of course, when you read Ender's Game, you realize the reason they do these games uh, is to um, root out the fighters from uh, all the other normal kids who, you know, want lead quote unquote normal lives in this world that seems to be overrun with poverty and there are a lot of bad things that happen on the streets. Of course, Bean knows that. Some some of them don't, but it's a very different look into the future, I think. Um, <clears throat> and of course, his life changes, and he learns to trust. At first, he d he doesn't really know what it is to trust or to have a parent, although he has Sister Carlotta who takes care of him and everything. Um, of course, and the other person who takes care of the one the the guy who finds them at first and he she ultimately gives Bean to Sister Carlotta. Um, of course there's a lot of discussion on religion here and politics, which two things that you don't really want to discuss in a book. Um, <laughs> but even coming from the background that I am coming from, I I didn't find it at all uh, derogatory. Um, you know, it's I I consider dogma to be one of those old fashioned things that I just you know, I don't really I don't allow myself to be bogged down by it. I am more open minded. Uh I consider myself a person who's open to change at first. I might be a little bit um uh, reticent to it at first because <laughs> I don't want my control taken away. And who does? I mean, we're human beings. And um, that's ultimately what Bean figures out with uh, the buggers coming back and making the attack that they do. Um, ultimately, there's victory. That's the only uh, real spoiler I'm going to give you about uh, Ender Shadow, which I absolutely love. And it's um, it actually took me a few days, I, I would probably say a week to get through this, but it probably would have taken me a day or two to have finished this in one sitting, and I had a a, a good chance to sit, <laughs> which I don't when I'm working. It was 4.36, and then it has some discussion questions, which I think would be great for a room setting, um, and it talks about the books that are involved with Ender's Game, and any of of you who are intrigued with the series from what I've told you about this parallax and Ender's Game itself, um, this little addendum is at the very end. Subtitle, uh, not subtitle, but superscription, it says Ender's Story Continues, ellipsis. In Speaker for the Dead, Orson Scott Carr's award-winning sequel to Ender's Game, Ender Wiggin has run far and fast using the effects of near-light speed travel to outlive his past and become nearly anonymous. He is now the Speaker for the Dead. Of course, we learn about that in Ender's Game itself. The, uh, uh, he's now Speaker for the Dead, the author of The Hive Queen and The Hegemon, and he has come to planet Lusitania to tell the truth about a man's life at his graveside. But Lusitania is a very special place, the first uh, planet humans have found that harbors sentient life form, though it is very strange indeed. And Ender has more reason than any other man to seek communication and peace between humanity and the Pequeños. Um, the story of Ender on the Lusitania continues in the novels Xenocide and Children of the Mind. Uh, these two books are really a single long novel that tells the story about the Starways Congress and acted to the discovery of the Descalada on Lusitania and how Ender and his children and allies saved the world. You can also read about Ender's first flight from Earth and his first arrival on formal for formic colony world, Ender in Exile. This novel follows immediately after Ender's Game in chronological sequence, but it was written long after Children of the Mind. You can read it at any point. So, yeah. It's really good. Oh, there's a... It's, uh, there's a some other books about Bean as well. And right over here it says, um, the most recent book in the Bean Cycle is Shadows in Flight. 
Bean and his children are also using the effects of near light speed travel to outrun time. While on Earth, researchers work to discover how to counter the deadly effects of genetic manipulation that made Bean so inhumanly brilliant. Yeah, it talks about that in this book, by the way. I'm not going to go into that too much. Shadows in Flight is available as an enhanced ebook with dozens of beautiful full color illustrations, maps, and extra content. It's also available as the regular text, hardcover, paperback, and ebook. Yep, I'm going to have to look into that, that's for sure. But uh, it's definitely a series to, to look into and sink your teeth into if you're into um, just the. Uh, the effects of uh, religion on society and politics, um, humanity in general, the psychology of that. And I really enjoyed it for that because it, it just brought me back to the anthropological roots that I had <laughs> uh, really sunken into when I was in college. It was actually a side study for me, but I keep coming back to it. It's, just, it's something that... I don't think I could ever make a real living out of it. It's it's always something that is going to serve me well into my uh, <clears throat> my nonage, or is it dotage? I'm not sure. Is it nonage or dotage? I think dotage is uh, elderhood, and nonage would be uh, youth. I do believe. I'm not sure if I did <laughs> actually. Define that correctly. If I didn't, please forgive me. I'm only human. But, um, uh, let's see. Amongst other things, I am currently watching uh, RWBY. But, of course, I have not seen the whole series yet. So far, I'm in love with it. But I am going to be watching that in the future. Of course, I'm not going to watch Wolf Children right away or the... Uh, new Three Musketeers or Wedding Date. I remember watching Wedding Date a long time ago. I'm not sure when I first saw it in cinemas, but it was a long, long time ago. So I forget um, I, if I really enjoyed it or not, but I'll have to watch it again. Um, I've got Trigon Badlands Rumble. And I have seen the original Trigon, which I absolutely adore for Sebastian Stampede. Love and Peace! Uh, he's uh, one of my favorite characters of all time, Wolfwood, all the others. I wrote a fanfic about uh, Trigun meeting Eat Man. And, of course, it was probably the one of one of the oddest things I had ever written, other than um, Master of Muscadon meeting Alucard, which uh, it was a great crossover. It was, you know, brilliant. And I've done crossovers like that in the past. My most recent crossover was uh, Wander meeting Uncle Grandpa and uh, the Crystal Gems from uh, <laughs> Stephen Universe. And I thought, ah, what? This could be the perfect happening in the cosmos, and everybody's happy. Ah, I don't know where I come up with this stuff in my head, but. Uh, Let's see, what else am I working on? I'm working on a story called Prima Regis. And um, the story is basically about a planet where uh, the inhabitants are all royal. They live in the lap of luxury and exist peacefully among each other. The successor to the king, though, he finds his life absolutely boring and mundane. and he just wants to end his ennui for good. So he takes an exoskiff, which is, you know, the equivalent of a UFO or you know, spacecraft. It's got all of his provisions and everything that he possibly needs. And he has this suit. The suit is, is sentient and it's uh, intelligent. And, of course, I go into that in the story. It, when he lands on Earth, he meets uh, a native there in Japan. Her name's Rika Kabato, and he falls in love with her. They fall in love together, and eventually he has to tell her that he's not of this earth, that he's from a planet called Prima Regis. And I'm getting to that point, <laughs> and she doesn't, she, she's actually um, not that shocked, and she's not at all too terribly upset with him. Um, I'm working on uh, an Eros as well, another erotic story. Um, let's see. 
Uh, I got another parody I'm working. Well, I got a parody that I've written and I haven't recorded it. It's basically, um, it goes to the uh. It goes to the tune of Three Times a Lady. It's called Thirteen Times a Time Lord. I want to do a parody of Pompeii by Bastille because I really like that song. I want to do it about gaming. Is you know it just it would I don't know why, but it just feels like it would be a really great song about gaming. You know, like the, you're fighting the last boss. I want to do it about that. I think it would be hysterical. Um. Uh, let's see, what else am I working on? A uh, story called uh, Lucy Melbourne. Her, her real name is Lucinda. And she goes by Lucy. She's um, raised in the outback and she grew up on a farm. And she's kind of a rough and tumble of uh, Sheila. Uh, I'm going to be using some Australian slang, so I'm going to have to look some of that up. But that's going to be fun to write. And it's going to be a romantic comedy. <laughs> Um, she falls in love with an American tourist. Uh, then, of course, one of my most recent things I'm going to be writing is, um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, Shifting Sands. It's going to be another um, fantasy-esque thing. And then I'm going to be um, posting my song about uh, the Gigapods. <laughs> that Hussey is in curr currently embroiled in right now of, in New Homestucks, you know what I'm talking about. And if you can understand my um, my kind of frustration with it, uh, <laughs> I've actually got other things on my mind, but I've still been going back. I go back every single day that I have time to actually get online, and I think, please, please let them update it. Please let them update it. Please let them update it. And and I'll look and then I see the last page, which is the battle to end all battles. And I think, Hussy, come on, get off your laurels, do something. But you know there are other others of you out there who can relate to that. <laughs> and uh, of course, I I wish I had the talent to actually uh, do my cosplay as Eudora. I don't know why, but I actually feel closer to uh, Eudora than any of my other characters. Her, her uh, information is up on um, Tumblr. And I haven't really done... Uh, I'm going to do another um, illustration of her, but I'm going to do a swimsuit illustration. I, I just think she's so cute! She's, um, she is just adorable. She's such a likable character. She, of course, um, if I were to cosplay her, I would have to uh, be uh, authentic. So I would have to learn how to speak with a lisp. So that might be a little bit difficult. But if I would just uh, talk a little bit more like that, uh, that, she would be perfect. Because that's the way she sounds. Uh, but she's actually got a very pretty voice when she sings. So, uh, her theme song is um, Happy by Feral, which fits her to a T. I mean, she's absolutely big walking ray of sunshine. And, um, uh, <laughs> uh, she's just so much fun. Uh, speak with a lust. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, she's just great. I, I mean, I just. There's nothing to to not like about her character. The only thing, uh, when she prophesies, she only goes. Her god tears the uh, prophetess or, or prophetess of doom. Poor thing. I I mean, why'd she get get that god tear? It's so sad. But you know, she takes after her her whole bloodline. You know, being born into that whole Gemini thing. So. Um, She's uh, <laughs> the happiest prophetess of doom we've ever seen. Uh, that's the other reason. <laughs> it's because she, she did, it's kind of like a Radia. It's, it's an odd thing because I, I really wanted to do that with a, a Gemini character. I thought, please don't kill me. Yeah, this is going to be great. Because I, I just really wanted to do such a thing. And, you know, Tobel at the end of the world is like, everything is going to end with a big bang! And <laughs> she's, She's so much like that, and you know it, it won't all be bad. And 
she's just, she's encouraging everybody. She's like a, a Gemini version of uh, Nepeta, if, if you could say. It. I'm not sure how really to stripe, describe her, but a lot of her personalities. What you see in me, and you know, she's just go, 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 go. And she doesn't need caffeine because she, she has caffeine, she, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, she can't function. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, she she's interesting. I really like her character. And of course, uh, talk about uh, her Lucius. In the drawing, but I'm going to do another illustration of her. Put it up on Tumblr. <sighs> I'll probably do a illustration of Estrella because I think Estrella is probably the closest thing to my character as well. Cause she's she's kind of um, a misfit because uh, when she's given a a slice of soap or pie. She actually can go into trickster mode, which is interesting. Because when she's in trickster mode, she's mischievous. She's she's kind of like Loki in a way. You know, if you if you look into well, she doesn't betray. I mean, she just likes to have fun. She likes to um, pull pranks on people, kind of like John does. So there's um, a lot of fun and humor in her character, even though she's kind of a misfit. But Eudora's brother, Zolo, or Z, uh, Ziz, is actually, uh, his name is B in Polish, if you look it up. But I, I had to go online. I'm like, i got to have a name for him. And I, and I looked up Polish, na uh, Polish names, and I thought, what's B? And then it says Zizolo. And I thought, hmm, there we go. Ziz it is. And I know I'm not going with the, the normal format for names, but... You know, these are my characters, so <laughs> if you don't like it, then, you know, you can go your own way. Go your own way! You can have another one, another day. You can go your own way. Go your own way. <laughs> okay, enough of that. But <clears throat> I'm probably taking up too much of your time. I'm going to shut up now. So I shall see you later. Bye. Love on pressure. Ciao!